Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Mark Dixon, the headmaster here, and it's my fifth year of being headmaster at this fine school. And it gives me great pride, but also a privilege to tell you about why I think this school is fantastic. Now, normally on an open day, you'd have the opportunity to see around the school, at the campus, the amenities that we have, the boarding houses, and you'd be taken around by a couple of pupils. That can't happen this morning, but we have put a video contact content on our web page so that you can see a full open day talk from me and also a video tour of the school. If you haven't already looked at those, please do. This morning we won't be trying to repeat that information, but we will be saying a few words about the school. And that's really to tease up an opportunity for you to ask questions about the school. Please use in the chat box now or during the talks, type in any questions that you've got and either myself or one of my three deputies will answer those to you and we'll try and cover all the questions if we can. What I'd like to do is now introduce you to the three deputies. First of all, to introduce you to our deputy who's in charge of the boarding and pastoral and well-being life of the school. This is Joe Gale. Good morning. And now to introduce you to the deputy head in charge of the co-curriculum and character education of the school, Joe Chirpak. And lastly, to introduce you to the deputy head in charge of the academic life of the school, Rhea Mitchell. Morning. So we've got three deputies, each in charge of a crucial part of school life. And I hope that the titles of the deputy heads gives you a sense that we very much want to be an all rounded school that educates the whole pupil. We are unique as a state boarding school in that all pupils are boarders here. We have 600 pupils who are flexi boarders. They have the extended day during the week and will sleep over during the course of the year to experience boarding and to be educated in that boarding way. Separate to that, we have 500 boarders. Some are from overseas, most are from the UK and many of which live very close to the school. Despite that, they choose to be at the school most weekends. The reason they do that is I think they enjoy the thriving activity programme that we have at the school and at weekends, but perhaps most importantly, they're happy here. We've got a busy and happy community from seven years old through to 18 years old. This year, we've been oversubscribed for boarding, and in the last few years, we've been heavily oversubscribed for flexi boarding. This, mark, this year marked the second year in which we were rated as Surrey's most popular secondary school. If you want to apply to the school, please have a look carefully at the admissions process. It doesn't just work on catchment distance. If you have a need for the extended day, you can be given a higher priority. What I want to do now is hand over to my deputies to tell you a bit about the area that they're in charge with. First of all, Rhea Mitchell. Good morning, everybody. Um, at the Royal Alexandra and Albert School, we are really proud to provide all of our pupils with a broad, balanced and well-rounded education. Now, of course, ensuring excellent academic outcomes is really an absolute priority for us. And our results here are truly exceptional. At A-level, our results place us in the top 10% of schools and colleges nationally. And at GCSEs, our progress results place us in the top 1.5% of schools nationally. Now, how do we achieve this? Well, unashamedly, we believe that attitude is king. Attitude to learning drives all that we do. And we regularly report home to parents on this element because we believe this really is the key to attainment. We're proud to be truly comprehensive and support all pupils to do well. We offer a carefully sequenced learning journey from age seven to age 18. And at Key Stage 3, our pupils follow a full range of subjects for three years with no curriculum narrowing. At GCSE, our pupils are able to choose from a range of options and we spend a lot of time making sure that the pupils are on the right pathways for them. At A-level, we then offer 26 different subjects, including five BTECs. 
Throughout the senior school, our pupils are taught by specialist teachers with excellent subject knowledge and an ability to communicate those skills and that knowledge which will ensure that our pupils can become lifelong learners. Now, the boarding environment is really key to academic success. Boarding and flexi-boarding pupils are able to complete prep, that's what we call homework, complete prep on site, and this is really pivotal to their independent learning skills. We take prep very seriously here and we monitor it and give it as much status as the work that pupils do in class. I'm really proud of how committed our specialist teachers are to each and every pupil's success. During the year, for example, in the run up to exams, we typically run between 50 and 60 academic revision clinics a week. And this is where the extended day really serves as well, because pupils are able to work with their teachers throughout that extended day period. Now, when you look at our sixth formers, you can really see where that journey is heading. Every year we send um, pupils to a range of Russell Group universities, including Oxford and Cambridge. Sixth formers and our sixth form really is the jewel in our crown. But when we look at our sixth formers, we remember that at one time they were sat, as your child is now, trying to make this really big decision. But now as young adults, they look back on the years that they spent at RAS throughout the junior and the senior school, really knowing and confident in the fact that RAS has left them thoroughly prepared for the future. I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Joe Gale, Deputy Head Boarding and Pastoral. Good morning. The boarding provision at Royal Alexandra and Albert School defines the nature of our school. It makes an exceptional contribution to the overall pastoral care and the personal development of all of our pupils. First question I'd like to pose to you is why choose boarding for your child? Well, research indicates that boarding can play a major role in providing rich experiences to develop skills which are necessary for well-rounded adults to live fulfilling and enriching lives. Boarding also has more immediate and tangible effects. It raises the level of achievement in academic, sporting, musical, creative and dramatic fields. So why choose Royal Alexandra and Albert to board? Well, we aim to empower our boarders to take ownership of their lives, not just their academic and pastoral development, but their behaviour towards others and their role within the community. We carefully structure the boarding experience to ensure that our pupils make exceptional progress in all of these areas. Whilst we want our, all of our community to strive for more, the superb leadership from our experienced heads of house enables the staff in boarding to carefully cultivate a safe and supportive environment so that all of our pupils feel at home within the boarding houses. This is summed up nicely by one of our boarders who's currently in the sixth form but has made a journey from junior boarder to senior boarder to sixth form boarder and he said you can develop maturity and independence within a supportive safe environment and you're encouraged to discover your qualities as an individual. The boarding experience helps you to accrue a range of skills leaving you ready for the outside world and that individual is very much ready for the outside world and will make a fantastic impact in whatever it chooses to do. Flexi boarding, what is flexi boarding? Well, flexi boarding enables our pupils for whom boarding is not the preferred option to benefit from the boarding facilities and get a taste of the boarding experience. Our flexi boarders are able to use the excellent boarding facilities in the morning, during school, break and after school, and we encourage our flexi boarders to spend up to 10 nights boarding with us so that they can benefit from the developmental experience that our boarders have. We made a recent change to what we call vertical boarding. That means that the majority of our senior boarding houses have ages from 11 to 18 in them. This has increased the, the range of leadership opportunities for our older boarders, enabling them to support younger pupils, influence the structure and function of our school and leave a positive legacy. The younger boarders have gained a huge benefit from this with role models to aspire to and mentors to give advice, guidance and support. Finally, I'm a parent to three children, one of whom attends this school. And whilst I want all of my children to achieve great academic outcomes, none of that really matters if they don't feel safe and they aren't happy. Here at Royal Alexandra, we prioritise the pastoral care of our pupils with exceptional team of individuals that provide personalised support for your child, helping them to grow and flourish as they make their journey through our senior school. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Joe Chirpak, Deputy Head Co-Curriculum. Thank you. 
Good morning. The co-curriculum at RANA is very much part of the three pillars of education that are the foundation of the school's ethos and a strong reason why parents choose RANA. We have an unrivaled co-curricular programme when compared to state schools and many independent schools that is also outstanding value for money. Our aims are twofold. We aim to provide broad range of activities so there is something for everybody and at the same time offer clear pathways for pupils to develop to higher levels should they want to. Sport, the arts, leadership, recreation activities and outdoor adventure are all key aspects of our programme. For example, we have a thriving Duke of Edinburgh programme, a model United Nations group, a full functioning stables, and we are soon to be one of the first state schools in the country to be a Steinway school, a centre of excellence for the, for the piano. The clubs and activities are a big part of life here at RNA. Sport is a big part of that as well. We have a thriving fixture list playing both state and independent schools in rugby, football, netball, cricket and swimming. We have a range of recreational sports from martial arts to trampolining. The arts continue to develop really well here at the school and we have an inst instrumental teacher programme, musical groups and a number of fantastic performances throughout the year. In drama, we host a large production, which has been a great success and also attended a number of competitive events locally. Character education. We believe strongly that a Gatton pupil is resilient and prepared for life after school, even in a changing global society. We want them to develop life skills as well as academics. We have a range of character clubs and leadership opportunities. The Global Leader Award is a bespoke leadership programme for RNA six formers. By September 2021, we are aiming to have a whole school leadership programme for all years. Community and charity. We have a number of close partnerships with local community groups, in particular with a number of local charities. The pupils really enjoy engaging with the local community by hosting events on site or going out to local events. Gatton pupils are passionate about helping others. And finally, scholarships. We offer, uh, we offer scholarships for sport and music for boarding pupils in year nine and sixth form. More details can be attained from the admissions team. Overall, we are passionate about providing opportunities and experiences for our pupils to develop as confident young people. The sky really is the limit here at RNA. Thanks for listening. And if you have any specific questions, please type them in later. I'll now hand back to Mr. Dixon. Great. Thank you to the three deputies there. So as Joe said, please do type in questions if you have them. We do have one question about remote learning, which I'll hand over to Mrs Mitchell to answer in a moment. Um, but just to say the question is particularly about remote learning in the junior school, and there will be a separate uh, open morning live event which focuses on the junior school, which I'll present at, and so will Mr Greenwood, our head of juniors. Today's is principally focusing on the senior school, but of course there'll be parents logged in who are asking about the junior school as well and that's fine because you know if you're looking at the junior school you'll obviously want to think what's the senior school like we, we love having pupils that go all the way through us just before i hand over to mrs mitchell to say about remote learning just to say that actually we didn't close in march we, we stayed open through the easter holidays and stayed open through the summer half term so we had many pupils it got up to about 150 pupils who were still attending last summer term either because they were key workers or because they were vulnerable or because they were year sixes. So my staff were running uh, the learning in school and also supporting remote learning at home. What we think we have set up very well now in the September term is a model of blended learning, a model where pupils can be in the class learning or they can be at home um, capturing that learning as well. Just this week I was teaching a year 11 maths class and um, we've actually got a number of year 11s who are self-isolating at the moment and I only had two members of the classroom actually physically there with me but I had 10 other pupils logged on either from the boarding house or at home and they were fully seeing what we were doing because the, the uh, screen was being streamed to them and they were getting involved in discussions and it was actually really fantastic how well it worked. Well Mrs Mitchell I may not have left you much to say but I'll hand over to you now in any case. Thank you. So as Mr Dixon said he obviously gave an example of a maths class but um, I can say that all of our our lessons are recorded and streamed um, live so every lesson a pupil is able to access whether they are sat in the classroom or whether they are outside of the classroom and we use Microsoft Teams for that. Now students are able to access that lesson remotely 
and they can see what's going on on the board, but they can also contribute to the lesson as well. And our staff have worked to be trained now to make sure they're asking questions of pupils who aren't physically in the lesson at the same time. Now we have we maintain the exact same expectations of the pupils who are remotely accessing the lesson as the pupils who are physically sat in the classroom at that time. And we report on all of the pupils in the same way. Now, some of our pupils um, uh, able to aren't able to access the lesson at the time it's happening because obviously we take pupils from an international context. So what we have is that all of our lessons, as well as being able to be dyed, dialed in at the time that they're being recorded, pupils are able to access them at any time after that lesson. And actually what we've found is we've actually created now an excellent learning bank because pupils can now, maybe a year down the line, think, well, I didn't really understand that concept that my science teacher was talking about they can go back into the archive bank and they can replay the lesson and so actually we found that a uh, that remote learning has offered to us a real um, sort of great deal of potential for how we can support our pupils moving forward thank you thank you for that there's a question about our average class sizes and um, just just to um, really make clear that we're uh, a state boarding school. So the fee paying goes towards the extended day or boarding. None of the fees go towards the, uh, the education part during the day. And that is, of course, why our fees are considerably less than an independent uh, school. In fact, it will be cheaper in most cases to be a full boarder here than it would be to go to an independent day school. And I would recommend that parents think about what more they can get uh, for the boarding experience for the same price. And I think that's definitely well worth considering. But of course, they'll be interested in class sizes. Just to tell you at key stage three, our class sizes are in the high 20s, or at between about 26 and 28. We run more maths and English classes, so our average there is about 24. For some practical and technical subjects, it'll be down as low as 22. For GCSEs, we're in the mid 20s for our class sizes. Again, maths and English will run to be in the early 20s because we've decided to invest in greater number of classes for there. And for sixth form we're averaging at about 10 pupils per class across the whole sixth form. Now there was a question here which again I'll go back to Mrs Mitchell if I may which is asking about the home learning support at school and how does this operate for flexi borders before or after school and another question what is the, the, the level of home learning particularly in year seven do you think you could come in on that Mrs Mitchell? Yes. Yes. So we uh, obviously we have a prep timetable. So in terms of our clear expectations for the amount of prep that students should be doing, um, it's about an hour uh, a night at key stage three and it goes up to an hour and a half at key stage four. Now, obviously, our flexi pupils can stay and do prep in school. Um, or they can obviously do that at, at home. Now, the way that we run our prep is that the students are given a timetable, which is the night that they are able to do that prep. But the staff give prep during the week um, and give a week for that prep to be completed. And the reason why we do this is because what we're trying to do is encourage the children to take ownership of their prep time. So we say to the student, you know, it's fine if you've got, I don't know, swimming that you do on a Wednesday night, because you can actually say, I'll prioritise doing my prep on a Thursday. And so we build a prep time for timetable that gives students that capacity because actually uh, one of our key gat and aims is about taking ownership for your life and we think that that's really really important um, that we offer students the opportunity to develop in that way now obviously that doesn't come overnight uh, a student doesn't enter year seven and just suddenly able to just manage their time effectively but we really help the pupils to do that we uh report on prep effort and we look at putting interventions in place where a student is struggling to get their prep in on time. Obviously we have a sanctions policy if they don't do their prep they get put in a detention to complete that prep but we also have broader kind of supportive measures. We offer a prep club uh, in our, with our, within our enhanced learning team and that's really for students who particularly are struggling with the organisation around prep. 
but also the uh, pastoral team support with that as well and they also uh, help those students with their organization and we communicate with the boarding houses as well so if a pupil is really struggling in prep there's a communication and the head of house gives that child a bit of extra support and a bit of extra checking that they're on top of things. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. And actually, we've been conducting studies over the past uh, three years in particular. And what's very interesting is statistically, we see that borders uh, seem to do better than non-borders um, for GCSE and A-level results. And I think that's because of the working environment in the boarding house really does support that very, very well indeed. And of course, flexi borders can and do stay for um, to do prep in the boarding houses to be part of that. Now, moving across to the co-curriculum, and there's a good question here which is about tours and a question of um, what are some of the countries or tours that pupils may have the opportunity to get involved with. Mr Chirpak could you come in and talk a little bit about the sports opportunities and, and wider for tours? Thank you. Yeah of course um, one of my favourite subjects to be honest um, really exciting the opportunities here obviously we're a little bit restricted at the moment with with the Covid regulations but in the last few years, we've had sports tours to the Caribbean, to South Africa, to um, South of France, uh, mostly rugby and netball. Um, we had plans in place to develop some of our other sports um, external trips. And what we're trying to do is get, get a nice balance of um, fantastic experiences, but also trips and, and experiences that are manageable financially for, for all. So we try and do a range of different um, level of trips and, and sports tours, if you like, as well. And we, we've also had some trips in the arts as well. Um, we regularly go down to Cornwall to perform at the Minac Theatre um, and we we uh, perform locally in, in a number of um, drama type events. So it, it is sport uh, related, but it's also through the arts as well. Um, and we, our trips programme is, 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 is extensive. We have a borders trip programme at the weekend, every Saturday and Sunday there are um, you name it, we we go to that venue in in the southeast pretty much for us to, our pupils to enjoy um, what's what's on offer uh, in this part of the country. Um, but we also have an extensive range range of educational um, um, opportunities as well that link to exams and and requirements and coursework, but also just to to benefit the wider learning. Um, so it, it really is quite extensive and and, and pretty impressive. Really, um, there is something for everybody, and we hope that everybody can 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 manage their manage their finances to get an opportunity during their time here. Thank you very much, Joe. And one of the things we do is plan well in advance so that we can support the pupils who would like to fundraise towards such if they would like to. Um, now, there's a question here, uh, which again will go back to Mrs. Mitchell. I'll be really keen to get a question I can divert uh, Mr. Gale on boarding and pastoral. Some, some can ask me something about that, please. That would be great so that he gets to feel a bit more involved. But Mrs. Mitchell, could you please answer these questions? Firstly, do we have a more able programme for higher academic or higher achieving pupils? And secondly, how do we go about um, reporting or assessing academic progress? back to parents. Could you answer those two, please? Of course. Uh, we, um, in terms of our more able pupils, actually at GCSE, our most able pupils achieve between a grade to a grade higher in terms of the progress they make. So actually we make, um, I mean, we, we make significant value at all ends, but we definitely do make quite a lot of value at the top end for those pupils. We do set in some subjects to support the more able pupils. So we set in English and maths uh, throughout the school. Um, we have a separate science pathway at Key Stage 4. And we also offer a slightly different approach for MFL for the most able pupils who are able to do two languages uh, throughout their time at Key Stage 3. I mean, in terms of setting, our main priority is always place the child in the place they can maximise their potential. So that's always at the core of when we make those setting decisions. In terms of 
uh, the, the provision for the most able. There are quite a lot of things that actually dovetail with the co-curriculum program. So we have clubs and societies that support development um, within certain subjects. So for example, um, English happens to be my subject and there's a debating club for those pupils, but also some of our activities, for example, Model United Nations, etc. That's really going to stretch those most able. By the time those pupils get to uh, university, uh, sorry, to sixth form level, we offer then uh, UCAS guidance for all pupils, but we also then offer bespoke um, training for pupils who are going for potentially medicine or dentistry or who are applying to Oxford and Cambridge and they will get a sort of bespoke mentor that will really help practice interviews so we can get them where they need to be on that pathway. I know for example that the headmaster is working with one of our potential uh, Oxbridge maths candidates and he meets with that student every week to really support that student in, um, in making sure that she's going to be at the right level uh, for the interview. I think that was a, I can't remember if there was a second part to that question, Mr. Dixon, sorry. Thank you. There's a, a question here which is asking about stables. There's a parent who said their child is particularly interested in uh, being involved with horses, maybe doing equine work later and asking about what the opportunities for that is. And um, certainly we're very lucky to have stables with uh, 30 horses here. And there's several different ways that the pupils can get involved with that. They can simply have riding lessons, which comes at an additional cost, or they can do something that, like join pony club, which means uh, once a week they have riding lessons and another slot a week they learn how to look after the horses and do stable management, etc. And absolutely there's lots of opportunities for them even from that age to get involved with the stables and through their time in the school actually you know get more and more involved and Mrs Mitchell I know you're academic but also you happen to be a bit involved with the horses so maybe you can say something about this Yes, actually, we uh, I, I do happen to also have a horse. So if I wasn't a deputy head academic, I'd like to be a world famous dressage rider. But but there we go. Um, yes, we do have uh, we do have a horse. In fact, there is a webinar uh, which I've done recently, which is on our website, which where I've interviewed uh, the, the lady that, that runs the stables. Actually, I would say um, the stables is a really kind of nice area where for some pupils, that's really their niche uh, within the school and they spend a lot of time down at the stables. We also offer other things where we kind of use the stables to support again what's going on um, more broadly for that child. We run a Changing Lives Through Horses program, uh, for example, because actually um, the kind of uh, self-discipline that you have to exhibit around a horse that weighs half a ton is uh, actually a really, really important, um, important character development. Thank you. I just I had a couple of questions that do relate to the pastoral side for Mr Gale. So thank you for that. One is about just what is an average structure of a boarding day and how many people share a room in boarding. And the other question is about transition, what we do to make new pupils feel welcome at year seven. I think whether they're boarders or flexi boarders. Mr Gale, could you try and answer both of those? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Headmaster. So we're now in break time, so you may hear that my office is located very close to quite a hub of activity with year sevens playing ball sports. Shows our, our thriving break times and the, the pupils enjoying themselves between lessons. The average boarding day will start around about 6.45 to 7 o'clock with wake up. Uh, boarders will then go to breakfast, so they go to the dining hall and they have breakfast as a house unit, which is a nice sort of family feel about it. And they have a wide range of different choices for breakfast. They then go back and, and they're ready, ready for the start of the school day and they will participate in the school day as all of our other pupils will. At the end of the school day, they will then go back to the house and prepare for their co-curricular activities, which run from four until half past five. And then after those activities, they have a quick turnaround, a short meeting, and they'll be going off to dinner as, as their house uh, within their house unit again. Um, and that is followed by uh, a bit of downtime before they start prep at 7 p.m. And that will last for a, a different range of times, depending on their age. So an hour for our younger pupils up to two hours for some of our older pupils and our sixth formers. Um, activities in the evening will start at 8 to 
Our youngest pupils might not be able to participate in those regularly, but we do try and allow them to have that on a, a weekly basis at least. And then we'll start the process for getting ready for bedtimes. And again, that's staggered for the different year groups to be age appropriate. So our youngest pupils will expect to have their lights out asleep by 9.15. Our older pupils are obviously given, given a little bit more freedom in that. And, uh, there's lots of details I could give you about their routines. I suppose one of the other highlights is the Sunday lazy wake up, which uh, our boarders really appreciate, which is followed by one of the highlights of the week, which is our Sunday brunch. And then later in the day, our Sunday dinner, which we allow our pupils to influence as well. So that we mix it up from a, a traditional roast to a wide range of pupil choices so that they get a, a, a flavour of what they want on their Sunday afternoon. Um, in terms of supporting boarders when they arrive, so particularly in year seven, but this is for any new boarder that arrives, they will be assigned a buddy that's carefully selected based on the individual that's joining and they're matched with someone who's appropriate who's going to be able to provide that right level of support, um, going to help to, to bring them out of themselves and to help them into embrace the boarding life. Um, so that will be for the sort of phased in, uh, introduction to the boarding life and they will quite often sometimes we aside a staff mentor as well we monitor to see how they're doing and then we make as i said before a bit of a personalized approach that fits for that individual um, in the school our head of year seven and our head of middle school provides a, a really quite thorough program of integration into the school and that will be for some pupils again a mentor that might be assigned but for the whole cohort we have a range of different sessions that looks at what it is to be part of RAS or looking at our Gatton aims and how they can step up to embrace our Gatton aims and supporting them to make steps towards being part of our community that and that enables them to all contribute to it. Um, I think I think that's a few of the things you you touched on there. It's quite a broad question. Is there any other facets that I haven't touched on, Mr. Dixon? No, that's that's great. Thank you. I'm going to dive back to Mrs. Mitchell because um, she did ask the repeat of the second question, and I missed it. And I'm sorry about that. There was a question about how frequently we do academic reporting, and also a question about our SCN provision. So again, I'm giving you two, Mrs. Mitchell, but I can remind you of the second one if needs be. Thank you so much. Yes, it's hard to, when it's a train of questions, you can forget the second when you're on the, on the first one. So in terms of our reporting home, now we report home um, pretty regularly, actually, and I think that that's pretty normal given that we have a boarding context where, you know, the students may be not going home every, every week. Um, and also in senior schools, I think parents can often find there is a difference in that in the juniors, you know, you're in normal times more often kind of dropping the pupil at the school gate and seeing the teacher whereas it's really important that in senior schools we we ensure that parents maintain that connection because obviously there's a broad range of teachers those children suddenly suddenly have throughout the senior school um on average it's about half termly uh for key stage three and four so um we report in half term one every pupil gets an attitude to learning grade home and we think that's really important because they've just all gone home actually um, because we think we want to start off by giving parents a really clear indication about attitude we then continue to report home um, on people's attitude grades now Pupils will often either have a report that goes home that half term or it might be a half term where they've got a parents evening or where they've got um, a sort of end of year exams and those grades are going home. So across the year, you can expect to have about four reporting home, uh, reporting moments that go home. Now, that really, it's really important that we see the reports, they kind of begin a conversation. Throughout the year, we utilise a, a programme uh, called Class Charts, where whenever your child gets a um, re reward for something positive they've done across any area of the school or something negative that they've done, uh, that goes gets pinged through onto a system that, that goes through back to the parent. Um, and that really helps you to kind of keep track on how your child is getting on uh, throughout that academic year. But it's 
fun pivotal that parents know that if there's ever a problem with what's going on in a, in a lesson, um, the parents email the teachers and the teachers get back to that parent within, we normally expect a 28, uh, sorry, 24 hour turnaround um, to get back to those parents, even if it's just a holding email. Of course, if there's a problem that's more kind of holistic across a range of subjects, then parents in the school day will go to the head of year, or uh, if it's more of a boarding issue, they will go to then the head of house. So I would say we have these sort of defined reporting moments, but actually communication is really important to make sure that that child is doing well. And we talk a lot about the triangle of child, parent and school. And when those three things are working well together, then the child is usually doing really well as a result. Um, Mr it's Mitchell, simple. just to cut in, thank you very much for that. Before we move on to the SEN question, there was a parent asking about how whether this works differently when parents are overseas. And could you say something about how we get that triangle to work for overseas parents as well? Because that's a good question and, and I can understand a concern maybe for parents that are so far away and can't just pop into school. Yes, I mean, obviously, we uh, obviously they receive the reports at the same in the same way, and um, we have um, sort of email communications that's going on as well. Now, at the moment, all of our parents' evenings are virtual, um, and we find actually that's really good because we've got that opportunity where parents can kind of dial in uh, to parents' evenings. In normal times, we run two different parents' evenings, and one of them is timed uh, so that it, it links in with when um, borders are being collected uh, so that the parents are more likely to be here and able to then meet the, the um, meet the uh, meet the teacher. I think it would be good maybe Mr Dixon uh, because a lot of this involves how well we work with school and boarding and then our international parents. It might be good to get a word from Mr Gale who can talk about how the heads of house really support the communication between school and home. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the, the heads of house are uh, for our borders really the main points of contact between school and home in, in most cases because um, they are the parent here in school for that child. Uh, they send regular updates to parents about um, sort of general messages for boarders to keep them in the loop with things that are happening, events within um, the boarding house. So that's one sort of generic way of communicating. But but the the, the other main way is just that they are available almost every day of the week to, to contact backwards to parents about any issues and they will facilitate um, any of the discussions that need to happen between other members of staff. So they act as that central point of contact, gathering information and feeding back or directing parents to particular, particular members of staff that might be able to support with a specific thing that, that, that's been raised. Um, as I say, they are like a parent in school, so they, they handle sort of the umbrella of communication with between school and home uh, and they're always available um, when I speak to the pupils and the, and the parents of borders so borders and their parents and you ask who's the most important person it's always the head of house you know that person is their go-to um, and, and they can be relied on to to you know, keep everyone in the loop and to make sure that they are out there as an advocate for your child and to support them I hope that covers it Thank you. Thank you very much. So just time for a few more questions to answer. Someone's asked how long is the flexi day? Well, a normal operation, it's from seven o'clock in the morning through to eight o'clock in the evening. We, we ask flexis to be picked up just while we start the post prep routine. So absolutely uh, flexis can be here during the prep time uh, and, and, and that works well. Um, there's a question uh, from Mr Chirpak, which is about the opportunity for water sports. I mean, we are lucky to have a lake here, which we do sometimes use for kayaking. It's a big lake, but we don't, it's not large enough for sailing. But we, we do interface with the local water sports uh, company, I know, to get a bit involved with that. Mr Chirpak, have you got anything more to say about opportunities with water sports? Yeah, I think you've, you've, you've said most of it there, Headmaster. But yeah, we do do a lot of kayaking on site. Um, we do have um, a large lake and a number of small lakes on site. Unfortunately, the large lake is actually um, it's actually quite shallow, so we can't do uh, much sailing on it. Um, we do provide opportunities during our Explore Week for our year groups to go out and do out, outward bound adventure 
um, in various sites around the country. Um, so they will get a good sort of water sports experience during during that. I think sailing is something that we could look to develop and I'd be happy to look at that in the future moving forward. Obviously, we'd have to go off site to do that uh, and develop um, a link with a, with a local sailing provider. But I know there's opportunities in the, in the local area and that's something that we can certainly look at. But the students do get an opportunity to do water sports and, um, and I think that's a really positive thing. Thank you. Just a couple of questions I'm just going to whip through. One is about um, is the catering team happy to manage allergies and, and absolutely we have uh, a reasonable number of pupils with allergies and the catering team can keep a list of that and um, it's really important to me that we don't have any barriers like that for borders or, or flexi borders and we do in particular areas of school have a complete nut free uh, policy uh, in the boarding houses and in the dining hall is completely nut free. There are some events where we warn there may be nuts and actually part of our deal there is to make sure that pupils with significant allergies learn how to live their lives without allergies and if we try and make everything you know too free from it it can give them a, a false sense of comfort so we try and walk that fine line. There's a question about EPQ the extended project qualification whether we offer that at sixth form and we do pupils can choose four subjects for A levels even if they want to at sixth form most do three um, those that do three will either do the global perspectives qualification which is worth half an A level or they'll do the extended project qualification which is worth half an A level now there was a question about the support um, for, for SCN and we've got a large department called the enhanced learning team and Mrs Mitchell will tell you a little bit more about what we do to support pupils who, who need support in that way Mrs Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so obviously I think given our kind of holistic nature to our school we are often quite popular uh, in you know in that in that terms. I mean it's important probably to say that um, you know we are a state school and the, the side of the school uh, the academic side of the school is very much the state aspect of the school and so uh, pupils with EHCPs will get uh, the same amount of uh, focus and support that you would expect from that EHCP. So we don't offer anything different from other state schools in that area, but we do have very good outcomes for those pupils. So as Mr Dixon says, the ELT, uh, the Enhanced Learning Team is run by the Director of Inclusion and a uh, SENCO works in that department as well. And actually we have a, a situation where our SEM pupils have no difference in the rate of progress that they make compared to their non-SEN counterparts. So that really shows that, you know, really good impact with how well those pupils are doing. Thank you. So I think we're going to wrap up now. There was one question about how is head of house selected in the boarding houses and this is done by the house staff team within that boarding houses and will involve uh, the pupils getting involved with that as well. What I would say is um, the tremendous opportunities there are for leadership at this school uh, because of the co-curriculum but also because of boarding with 10 boarding houses each of which are vertically arranged from young to old pupils the, the the progression and development of leadership and character really is vast and I would sort of finish I think by summing up that saying I truly believe that development of character is best done at a school like this with boarding and the co-curriculum and we really see that. I think the Royal Alexandra and Albert pupils are confident, they're, they're interesting, they've got things to talk about and um, I think that happens because of all the opportunities they get here and the sense of community in the school really is palpable and it's a shame that you can't see it because you're not here today. So I think um, that's the end of this morning. If you have any other questions, please do email into the school and we'll be happy to answer them. Please have a look at our video content um, that's also online and very much hope that you'll send your pupils here and that we'll get to know your pupils well and you because please recognise that uh, if you send your pupils here, that's really a ticket for the family to get involved with all of the opportunities on campus as well. And we really like being an extended family with that as well. Thank you very much everybody and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.